we're going to get ready to go right into our lesson on tonight. Amen. Come on, we're in the book of Psalms on tonight. Psalms number 27. Psalms number 27. Verses 1 through 8. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, <clears throat> that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Amen. We thank the Lord for the reading of the word of the Lord on tonight. And I want to talk just for a few minutes tonight about the spiritual law of expectation. The spiritual law of expectation. When we look at creation, God created physical laws to govern creation. He established laws to govern our spiritual lives. A study of creation reveals that God designed the universe to be governed by a host of physical laws. We all, as one point or another, went to school and we heard about gravity. You can throw something out there, it's going to drop to the ground. That is a physical law of God, gravity, inertia, amen. So, so these are physical laws, but there are also God's spiritual laws. The spiritual laws of creation includes, when it came down to creation, the law of his word. His word is what sustains and upholds all things. When we look at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Hebrews chapter one, verse three. <clears throat> Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, the law of his word, when he had himself purged our sin and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So I said that the spiritual laws of creation includes the law of his word, the law of sin to destroy all things. Romans 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And then the third law, spiritual law of creation was the law of the harvest. What is the law of the harvest? It is you reap later what you sow earlier. You reap later what you sow earlier. But the Galatians 6 and 9 said, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever one sows, that will he also reap. So the law of the harvest is, you reap later what you sow. You sow now, but after a while later, you're going to reap what you sow. Spiritual laws are laws that are unseen but you can feel the effect. The effect is evident. And one of the spiritual laws that I said I want to talk about tonight is the law of expectation. The law of expectation is crucial 
if we are to experience the promises of God. Why? Because the law of expectation has the power to change our realities. When you, the law of expectation has the power to change our realities. The, and, and essentially what the law of expect, expectation means is that eventually you get what you expect. You get what you expect. It can be either negative or it can be either positive. If you expect to have a bad day, then you will have a bad day. If you expect to be joyful in the midst of trials, then you will experience joy. You get exactly what you expect. God's law of expectation means that you eventually get what you expect. My question tonight is, what are you expecting? What are you expecting? You're praying, but are you expecting God to do it? I know God is going to do it. I know God is going to move on my behalf. I know God is going to save my children. I know God is going to save my family. I know God is going to touch the heart of that manager. Mm -hmm. I know God is going to do it. It simply means you get what you expect. Now, this is, this, this is the, the curveball. The results of the law of expectation is dependent on the expectations based on the word of God. If it does not line up with the word of God, you can expect all you want. You will not get that. Expecting God to make your wish his command is not included. Mm. Well, Pastor, you said I can say whatever I have. Is it based on the word of God? Does it line up with the word of God? But expecting that God will meet your need is included in the law of expectation. Let's look at Philippians 4 and 19. <clears throat> Philippians 4 and 19. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Expecting another thing that's included in the law of expectation is expecting God's strength in our weakness. Glory to God. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse nine said, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Mm -mm. When I feel that I don't have no more strength, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Glory to God. You wonder how you made it through because you were at the end of the road. Is your strength was made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest, rest upon me. My grace is sufficient for thee. You got to understand that. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Hallelujah. Now, I'm, I'm talking about what's included in the law of expectation. If when you are expecting something good out of something bad, it's included in the law of expectation. It's bad. Uh-huh. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. But I'm expecting something good to come out of it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do what Paul said in Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together. I expect it to work. I, 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 come on now. I expect it to work out. For the good to them that what? Love God. Mm. You got to love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. The law of expectation. Now, I want you to remember this if you don't remember anything else. And I made it real big for me to read. How you act. How you act. What you say and how you pray set your expectation. How you act, what you say, and how you pray set your expectation. Now, what do you mean? Your actions. Your actions. What are you doing? What you say out of your mouth. And how you pray. Cast a deciding vote 
on what you experience. Whether that experience will be misery, oh glory, or peace. Your actions, what you say out of your mouth, get control of your mouth. So only speak positive things out of your mouth. And how you pray, mm, how you pray, how you pray. And we're going to eventually get to how we pray the word of God when we pray. Because sometimes we need to pray the word of God. Glory to God. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, your actions, what you say out of your mouth, how you pray, cast a deciding vote on what you experience. When we look at Psalms 27 that we read in your hearing tonight, Psalms 27 was wrote during a time of great personal trial for David. That was the, at the, this, this was at a time where the enemy's armies were encamped all around him. Not only were the enemy's armies encamped around about him, but his accusers, his friends, his army, spoke lies about him. Mm, glory to God. The enemy and army is around you. The folk that are associated with you start lying on you. Glory to God. David, David, he, this was when Psalm 27 was wrote. David could have said what we often say, and I've said it myself, whatever can go wrong will go wrong. Have you said that before? Whatever can, can go wrong, will go wrong. But David didn't say that. Why didn't he say that? Because he knew God's promises. He knew the promises of God to go before him and to fight for him. What did Jehoshaphat say? You need not fight in this battle. David knew that God would go before him and fight for him. So therefore, everything was going wrong. The bottom was falling out. Your friends and your own army turning against you. But David, remember the word of God that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And because David knew God's character, what was the character? What was the character of God? The character of God was that he was a promise keeper. Mm. David knew God's character, that he was a promise keeper. Therefore, he expected God to make good on his promise. I'm expecting God to make good on some promises that he gave me. Glory to God. He expect, it looked like it wasn't going to happen. It looked like it's not going to happen for you. But David reached back and said, I know God. The God that I serve is a promise keeper. If he said it, he's going to bring it to pass. He expected God to make good on his promise. We can look at in, in Psalms 27. Let's look at David's declaration. We didn't include this verse, but in verse 13 of Psalms number 27, this is what David said. I believe, glory to God, that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Glory to God. Everybody ought to get happy about that. I believe that I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What David meant by this is that he believed that God would deliver him, not in the future or at a future place, but in the here and now, in this lifetime. He experienced that he was going to experience the fatness of the land, the goodness of the land, the goodness of God in this lifetime. Mm. He, he didn't have this belief that I'm experiencing all this when I get to heaven. He's what in this lifetime. I believe that 13 verses, Psalms number 27. How many of you can say it tonight? I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Even while I'm living right here on earth, I don't care how much the food costs go up in the grocery store. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. I don't care how much the gas go up. When I want to go somewhere, gas is going to be there. Come on now. I believe that I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. David got, got just what he expected. What did he expect? He expected deliverance from his enemies. Why? Because when we look at, at, at that 27th 
27 number of songs. So the second verse says, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart, I don't care who it is, who glory to God, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. Your confidence has got to be in God, not in the situation or what you can do. Because if you can do it, you don't need God. But I've got some things I need God to work out. And I know that only God can do it. Hallelujah. Now, what uh, my question to you again tonight is, what are you expecting? Spiritual expectation. Now, there are three foundations of expectation. Three foundations of expectation, excuse me. <clears throat> Number one, well, that's not it. The three foundations of expectation, there's got to be a valid reason for whatever you expect. Many times we want things that is not valid, it's not godlike, it's not going to help you on your spiritual journey. That is, you have to have real biblical base, a biblical basis for your confidence. And I'm going to look at the three primary foundations of positive expectation. When you know these, you can change your thinking. You can speak accordingly, which will result in you to experiencing the power of the law of expectation at your work and in your life. You got to know these things. You got to know, number one, the character of God. These are the foundations of positive expectation. You must know the character of God. David had an intimate relationship with the Lord. His relationship of, with the Lord did not only happen on Sunday mornings between the hours of 11 and 1 in the afternoon. Mm -mm. You got to have an intimate relationship with the Lord. David knew that God was faithful. He knew that God was loving. He knew that God only desired good things for his people. Therefore, David's declaration was based on God's character. You cannot know the character of God until you have a relationship with God. You cannot know the character of God until you have an intimate relationship with God. What David knew, what he knew about God. Today, know the character of, we know today in 2022, we know the character of God. How? Through the presence of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit operating 24 7 in our lives. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, that's something that you need because that's how you get to know the character of God through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we also have today God's word, the Bible, this Bible here. This is what we have, the word of God, the word of God. And the word of God reveals who God is and what he wants for our life. That's why the devil makes it so hard for us to read the word of God. That's why it's hard. That's why it's hard to sit down and read the word of God. Why? Because through your reading the word of God, you're going to develop a relationship with God. You're going to get to know God. And when I get to know God, when I get to know his character, I can expect God to work on my behalf in any situation. Why? Because I'm, what I'm saying out of my mouth, my actions, and what I am praying. And rather than set your expectation, according to how something appears. We are like the state of Missouri, the show me state. We put our expectations on how we set our expectations according to how something appears or how we feel. 
how something appears or how we feel. We should instead, this is what we ought to do, renew our minds according to the truth of who God is and what he says in his word. His word is true. Renew our mind. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it look like. I don't care what's happening right now. My God shall supply all my needs. Glory to God. Uh -uh, uh -uh. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. He made me the head and not the tail. He told me I can decree a thing. What I'm doing, I'm renewing my mind with the scriptures. Woo. Glory to God. So rather than, but we set our expectation. Well, you know, I don't know how this can work up because this happening and that happening. Uh-uh. You got to put on your spiritual eyeglasses and say, according to the word of God, hallelujah. Now I said that, that the, found, the three foundation, primary foundations of positive expectation is the character of God, number one. Number two is the history of God, the history of God. And I want you to know tonight that God does not show favoritism. God does not show favoritism. And I thank God for that. If he did it for somebody else, he can also do it for you. If he healed somebody else, he can also heal me. When we look in the Bible at the woman who was suffering from hemorrhaging, who suffered from hemorrhaging, built her confidence that she could be healed based on the stories that there were others told who were healed before her. Now, how did she hear those stories? Hear those stories? through their testimonies. And that's what the enemy does not want the people of God to do is to testify, not to testify of what the devil is doing or, or what he's got going on in your life, but to testify of the goodness of God, to testify of the things of God. Because if I hear that God brought you through, if I hear that you can make it, glory to God. If I hear I was in that dark, lonely place, glory to God. But the Lord brought me through. And I thank God that I'm standing. But through your words of the testimony. And that's what that lady heard. She heard those because what? She was going from doctor to doctor. Hemorrhaging. But when she heard people talking about Jesus. When she heard people testifying about Jesus. And that's what the enemy is stealing from the church. Even in the virtual world, world we don't have a testimony. If God woke you up this morning, you have a testimony. If you are clothed in your right mind, if you got peace on the inside, hallelujah. No, things are not working out the way I want, but the peace of God, the peace of God, your testimony. That's what strengthens the brothers and the sisters. When we share our testimony and our testimony is heard, it builds our faith. And as it builds our faith, it builds our expectation. We like to see that, um, uh, what is what is it? If he did it for you, he's gonna do it for me. We like to sing this song, but we won't testify. Come on now, testify. Our faith is built where we hear testimonies of miracles, signs, and wonders. Our faith is built. Why do you think that years ago, people would come out to, to Bible study on Tuesday night and on Friday night, and they would get up and they would testify that the Lord healed me of cancer. I had cancer, but I went back to the doctor and I'm healed of cancer. Why do you think that there, are, there were crutches and wheelchairs and all of that? They testify. And so if somebody else came down with it. And they heard that and they saw the, the, the walkers on the wall and they saw the crutches on the wall. They said, if God did it for them, woo, glory to God, he can do it for me. God will honor our expectations. Now I said that God doesn't show favoritism. Let me give you the scripture, Romans 2 and 11. I know that we show favoritism towards each other. But if we're going to be like Christ, he does not show favoritism. Romans 2 and 11, but there is no respect of persons with God. Ooh, glory to God. There is no respect of persons with God. I know some people think that they're right next door to, to heaven. Mm -hmm, you sitting at the right hand of the Father. Glory to God. But I'm here to tell you now that I'm a child of the King. 
and he loves me just as much as he loves you. Oh, bless his name. Let me move on. Hallelujah. The third foundation of positive expectation is the word of God. There are thousands of promises throughout scripture. And therefore, we have plenty of reasons for great expectation. Paul's confidence, when we look over in the book of Acts chapter 27, and I can't read it all right now, Paul, Paul, he had confidence in God. He and his crew was going to make it out of the storm of life. Say right here, I'm expecting God to bring me out of this storm. Hallelujah. The storm is, that's when you said, when you're expecting, I'm coming out of this storm. He knew that he, they were coming out of the storm alive. Why? Because he set his eyes on the word of God. God. The Lord has revealed to Paul that he would stand before the emperor. Therefore, Paul determined to trust God's word over a deadly storm. How many of you are trusting God's word that he's going to bring you out, even though the storm is raging in your life? Glory to God. And, 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 and Paul said in Acts 27, verse 23 and 24, for there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, fear not, Paul. Now, if Paul had been like us, the angel would have stood by us and said, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee, Me that everybody sailing with you, life is going to be saved. This was before the storm. God has given us a word of confidence before the storm started in our life, but you got to remember, the word of God that was shared. Paul's expectation was founded on the assurance of God's word. Now, remember the three foundations of spiritual ex expectations are the character of God, the history of God, and the word of God. And let me close this out. If you change your expectations, you will change your life. If you change, your expectation, you will change your life. What do you expect today? Is it doom and gloom based on what you see and what's around you? Or is it the goodness of God despite what you see, despite what is around you? How you act, I'm gonna keep saying it, how you act, what you say, and how you pray, set your expectations. And that casts the deciding vote on what you experience, whether it's going to be misery or peace. But I say how you act. Woo! Act like you know God is going to bring you out. Act like you know God is going to heal your body. Act like you know that you're not going to the poorhouse. Act like you know that you're going to get that raise in the house. Act like you know. Act like you know. Act like you know. And when you act like you know, Watch what's coming out of your mouth. Watch what you say Woo! when you're praying. Whatever the situation, ask the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, for those that want to be proper, to lead you to scriptures, to promises, and to stories that will bolster your faith. Now, in order to lead you to scriptures, it means that you got to pick up your word. You've got to pick up your word. And I want to encourage anyone now that is listening to me, if you don't own a Bible, all you have is your phone or your iPad. When next time you get paid or you get some money, go get yourself a Bible. Get yourself some highlighters, some highlighters, and read that Bible and highlight it and marinate on that. Because you know what? We would not have a lot of these psychological issues that we are having if we get immersed in the word of God. Keep reminding yourself, keep on reminding yourself this, that something good is coming out of this. How I feel like hollering. Something good is coming out of this. Open your mouth and speak good things. Speak, I shall not die in this valley. Glory to God. I'm coming out victorious. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The world, the greater is in me. 
and then wait expectantly. I'm just waiting on God to move. And while I'm waiting, I'm praising God. While I'm waiting, I'm giving him the glory. The psalm writer wrote this song, and I'm going to close with this. Something good is going to happen to you this very day, this very hour. Something good is going to happen to you. Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. And if I had a voice, I would sing that song tonight. Something good is going to happen to you this very hour, this very day. Something good is going to happen to you. Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. Jesus is passing your way. But you got to expect something. Don't let Jesus pass by you. And you don't expect him to move on your behalf. But first of all, he got to know that you're there. Which means that you got to open up your mouth. Spiritual expectation. Father, we thank you for the word that has been shared in this place. God, oh God, we are, we are expecting. Based on your word, we know your character. We know your history. We know your word. And Father, we don't care what it looked like. Glory to God. We know that we're in, in stressful times. We're about to go to war. Hallelujah. The price of everything is through the roof. My God, my God, my God. But Lord, we expecting to eat the fat of the land. We are expecting that be the head and not the tail. We are expecting that every need will be met. We're expecting that our bodies are healed. God, we are expecting you to move. And we thank you for it now. We bless your name. God, I expect you. I expect something good. To come out of this. Hallelujah. And we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Spiritual expectation. What are you expecting?